What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to solve a problem involving magnetization. The problem reads, An infinitely long cylinder of radius R carries a frozen-in magnetization parallel to the axis. Given by this equation, M equals KSZ hat, where K is a constant and S is the distance from the axis. There is no free current anywhere. Find the magnetic field inside and outside the cylinder by two different methods. So in this video, we're going to solve for the first method. We're in a section, as in section 6.2 of your book, locate all bound charges, uh, all bound currents, and then from there, we calculate the field that they produce. Okay? So here we have a problem involving magnetization. So first thing that we need to identify first is you will notice that the magnetization is directed in one direction and that's the Z direction. So that means the component of the magnetization would be along Z and that is a function of the distance of your point from your axis. Okay, so to illustrate that, so consider this cylinder. Okay, consider this cylinder wherein the z axis is your the axis of your cylinder. Okay, uh, and then uh, this is r, so that's the radius of your infinitely long cylinder so if we're going to uh, consider the unit vectors in cylindrical coordinate system okay so for example let's look at the side of the cylinder so from the z axis this is uh, at a distance s which is equal to r which is because this is at the uh, lateral surface of your cylinder Okay, so that means this direction would be the normal direction to the surface area around the cylinder and is equal to S hat. Since this direction is Z hat, therefore this direction is V hat. So if we're going to do it in this direction. So this is z hat. If this is your cylinder. This is your s hat. So z s hat. This is the direction of your v hat. Okay. So first, let's compute for the bound current. So there are two bound currents: one within the volume of the cylinder, and another one with within the surface. So that's the surface bound current. So the so the bound currents would be number one. That's your vo volume current, and that is equal to the curl of your magnetization. And because we're using a cylindrical coordinate system. And we already know that the magnetization M only has one component and that's the Z component and that's a function of S. So the curl for the cylindrical coordinate system will now be reduced to negative deriv uh, derivative of your M along the Z axis with respect to S V hat. Okay, so following this, we now have negative k v hat as you will notice that this is a constant so where does this bound current point at so it's if this is within the volume so this is the direction of the bound current okay because this is negative v hat and v hat is in this direction Next, number two, so we're looking for the 
surface current density, which is related to your magnetization by this expression m cross n hat. So because our n hat is along the s component, so this becomes k s z hat cross s hat and this is equal to k r v hat here we already set s to be r because we're looking at the surface of your cylinder because at the surface of your cylinder s is equal to r okay as you will notice that your current density j and your current density k is along the phi direction but one is opposite of the other okay so if you're going to draw that here on the surface k is in this direction yeah so because of this the resulting directions of your current bound currents j and k we can now consider this cylinder to be a superposition of two solenoids wherein your two solenoids have currents j b and k b and they are directed in opposite directions and because of that we can of course remember uh, we can set that the magnetic field is zero when you're considering points outside the cylinder because as i mentioned earlier we are now going to consider the cylinder to be a series of solenoids okay or superposition of solenoids now let's look so that means the resulting magnetic field produced by this cylinder will only be located inside the cylinder so in order to do that let's use Ampere's law okay so if we're going to use Ampere's law let's first identify your yes that's correct you have to identify your ampere and loop okay so we already know that the magnetization is along the direction along z so that means the magnetic field will also be along that direction so by symmetry we can choose this ampere and loop or in this side of this loop will contribute to the magnetic flux um, uh, uh, the dot product of the magnetic field with your line element okay so by Ampere's law we're in the integral of B dot DL here only be along this direction so this is equal to B times integral of dl which is only this because this is l so this is l and is equal to mu naught i enclose okay so notice that i enclose will be the current produced by your volume current and your surface current and this is equal to the integral of j b d a plus integral of k b d l so the d a for j b would be uh, this direction wherein this would be r and this would be s okay so this is now equal to negative k this is l times ds where s will vary from s to r 
Okay. And then plus integral of KB, which is KR, times DL, which is DL. Integrated from 0 to L. And this will yield to the value KS. So therefore, this is now equal to mu naught KS. And the resulting magnetic field would now be equal to mu naught KS. Sorry, this should be KS um, L. So this is mu naught K S and then the direction is Z hat. This is for S less than R or inside the cylinder. Okay, so in our lecture uh, this week, we're going to answer letter B. So for now, uh, that's all for this problem. And we'll continue this on a later day. And for now, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.